Good evening everyone, time for another silver update. This is the weekly chart of Apple crossed with silver. You can see that uh, the collapse in Apple continues. Had a little bit of a downdraft effect on silver, although I don't expect that to continue. We go over to the Apple chart. We can see that uh, it's come back to that line that I was saying was the next point for it to reach would be 425. Of course, we have another line all the way down here at uh, 200 and some others. So I think we're probably going all the way down. It's not going to be a straight line. Now, the question is, where is all this money going? Well, all you need to do is pull up a chart of Netflix. And you can see that that bubble is reigniting. So uh, we've got our Momo traders who are shifting out of Apple and into Netflix, of course. This is all just paper games. This is just uh, people trying to uh, find the greater fool. And uh, these are the games that Wall Street plays. Now, the next one that is taking off is RIM. And uh, that's actually Research in Motion. And this one is unique because they've actually done this a number of times. Ran it up, crashed it down, ran it up, crashed it down, ran it up, crashed it down. And you can see we're just starting another run again. So for those of you who like to gamble, you may want to get on the rim train. It looks like it's ready to take off again. But seriously, I want to look at a video that one of my viewers sent me and uh, try to take this apart. And it's important because it's actually led to a lot more information than I thought I would find and uh, that information is very revealing. So let's go to the video. The video is called There Is No Silver Shortage and uh, so let's play a little bit of that and then we're gonna take it apart piece by piece. First of all I want you to notice that it's from Moments in Trading. Uh, if you go to his YouTube channel he appears to be some kind of Forex guy. Not all of views until he all of a sudden started bashing silver and then he started to get some views so it looks like he's jumped on the silver bashing train uh, the next thing we want to see is his sponsor and that's going to be informedtrades.com informedtrades.com the gentleman that runs it is from FXCM and you can chase that rabbit trail down if you want to I'm not going to go there so back to the video. It is often said that the ground is running out of silver, that there is a silver shortage. However, as you will see in this video, there is no shortage of silver, and silver producers are not mining themselves out of business. Let's take a close look at the silver shortage story. So how did the silver shortage story start? In 2005, Ted Butler wrote an article titled Friedman's Theory in which he looked at the 2004 United States Geological Survey. You can find this article by searching Ted Butler Friedman's Theory. In this article, despite claiming that he has looked at reserve and resource statistics for years and that it was not his intention to mislead anyone or distort the information, Ted Butler took the reserve-based category from the U.S. Geological Survey, referred to it as the World Resource Base, and then claimed the, res the reserve base was the amount of silver thought to exist in the Earth. Now remember that term, resource base. We're going to look at those definitions. He then divided the reserve base by the current rate of mining production at the time and suggested that silver would run out in the next 29 years. Using USGS data, if we were to remove and exhaust all the silver in the ground, we would theoretically extract 570,000 tons, over 18 billion ounces, over the next 29 years. At that point, we would theoretically have no silver in the ground, and we will have long exhausted above ground inventories. That's zero below ground silver, and zero above ground. Here we have a vital material, known to all men for all time, literally disappearing before our eyes, both above and below ground. 
Since that time, others have modified 29 years to just say silver will run out by the year 2020. There was a link in Ted Butler's article that used to take you right to this very short two-page 2004 mineral commodity summary for silver at the United States Geological Survey. However, recently the link was changed and now it just takes you to a general page at the USGS. When one reads the 2004 survey, they can clearly see that the 570,000 tons that Ted Butler claimed was the amount of silver thought to exist in the earth is the mining reserve base, not the resource base as he listed or as he stated. Now keep those terms in mind as well, reserves and reserve base, because we're going to see some strange things. If Ted Butler had been really looking at reserve and resource statistics for years, and wasn't trying to mislead anyone or distort the information, one might assume that he would have known that the mining reserve base is not all the silver thought to exist in the earth. It is only a very small percentage of the silver in the earth. One might assume that he would have noticed the note right below the reserve base category in the report that states significant future reserves and resources are expected for major base metal discoveries that contain silver. So remember that as well. That would indicate that we should expect these numbers to change. One might assume he would have noticed the reserve base, the amount that Ted Butler and others have claimed was all the silver left in the ground and was running out in the 2004 report, had increased by 10% from the 2003 report. And in 2004, it was 30% larger than it was in the 2002 report. And in 2004, it was 35% larger than it was in the 2001 report. If Ted Butler had been really looking at reserve and resource statistics for years and wasn't trying to mislead anyone to distort the information, one might assume that he would have noticed in this very short two-page report that in 1996, 1997, 1998, 1999, 2000, and 2001, the World Reserve Base stayed at the same level. In other words, the amount he said was running out didn't change over those six years. Furthermore, between 2004 and 2009, while Ted Butler and others were claiming that silver was running out of the ground, based on Ted's 2005 article referring to the U.S. Geological Survey, the U.S. Geological Survey was reporting each year that the World Reserve Base, the amount that Ted Butler and others were claiming was running out, was not changing. It was 570,000 metric tons each year from 2004 through 2009. Again, the amount that was claimed to be running out did not change over those years. The reserve base dropped in 2010, but the reserve base... In Keep that statement in mind. The reserve base dropped in 2010. ...increased in 2011 and increased again last year. Why didn't the reserve base decline? Let's look at what a reserve base is. Okay, so we're going to skip his explanation. And we really want to get to the meat of this. So let me explain to you what I did. I actually took all of the data and put it into a spreadsheet for the years 1996 through 2012. And that gives the year before. So we have uh, these numbers for uh, through uh, the year before last. Now... First of all, I want to make you aware of the fact that there are two columns here. There are reserves and there are reserve base. We're going to look at the definitions in a moment of what the reserves are and what the reserve base means. But the first thing I want you to note is if you see here, it's broken down by country. He conveniently left out the countries in his screenshots that he did. But if we look at the United States, you can see here the United States had, in 1994, uh, we mined about 1,500 tons. The reserve was about 31,000. So you can see about 5% of the reserve was mined and uh, about maybe 2 or 3% of the reserve base. Now, let's look at these numbers just for the United States as we go down through the years. You can see we have 31,000, 72,000. Next year, same thing. 
Next year, same thing. Next year, you can see the reserves went up by 2,000, but the reserve base stayed the same. Next year, same. Next year, same. Here we drop back to 30,000 and we go up to 75,000. 25,000 and 80,000. Again, again. We're up 2003 now. Again, 25,000, 80,000. Again, in 19, uh, 2005, we see the same thing in 2006 and 2007. And then a very strange thing happens for 2008. You can see that this figure reserve base drops off and is no longer reported. You can see we have a big jump in the reserves from 270 to 400,000 tons. Now, if you do an analysis here of the countries, you can see that's not because these numbers changed. As you can see, the United States stays the same here at 25,000, 25,000, 25,000, all the way through. So there's a lot of things here, a lot of strange things here, but keep in mind that new countries are coming in, that that's what's causing this increase. But we're going to see here in a little bit that these numbers are absolutely meaningless. So you can see that even though the United States is mining, you see that amount? 1,700, 1,400, 1,200. You can see that the reserve never changes. They're just carrying forward these numbers. It's changed literally three times in the entire length of this 15-year series. And they also drop out this column of reserve base. So that doesn't give one a lot of confidence in these numbers. For, for, first of all, you would expect these numbers to change, uh, and we're going to look at the definitions here. So let's jump over to the definitions of these terms, and that's actually in the uh, footnote. So the first term that we have is identified resources. That's the term that Ted Butler was referring to. Identified resources are resources whose location, grade, quality, and quantity are known or estimated from specific geologic evidence. Identified resources include economic, marginal economic, and sub-economic components to reflect varying degrees of geologic certainty. These economic divisions can be subdivided into measured, indicated, and inferred, demonstrated, a term, etc. So it goes into that. Now, reserve base. This is the definition. Remember, they drop this. That part of an identified resource that meets specific minimum physical and chemical criteria related to current mining and production practices, including those for grade, quality, thickness, and depth, the reserve base is the in-place demonstrated, measured, plus indicated resource from which reserves are estimated. It may encompass those parts of the resource that have a reasonable potential for becoming economically available within planning horizons beyond those that assume proven technology and current economics. The reserve base includes those resources that are currently economic reserves, marginally economic marginal reserves, and some of those that are currently sub-economic resources. The term geologic reserve has been applied by other Others generally to the reserve base category, but it also may include the inferred reserve base category. It is not a part of the classification system. So now let's look at reserves. Reserves are defined as that part of the reserve base. Okay, so keep that in mind. Reserves are defined as a part of the reserve base, but we don't have a reserve base moving from 2008 and forward. There is no reserve base. So what is the definition of reserves? Which could be economically extracted or produced at the time of determination. The term reserves need not signify that extraction. Facilities are in place and operative. Reserves include only recoverable materials. Thus, terms such as extractable reserves and recoverable reserves are redundant and are not a part of this classification system. So. Very uh, difficult to pin down definitions, but we know that you can't have reserves without a reserve base, and we don't have a reserve base anymore. So let's get to that question of, it's actually notated here in 
the report for 2010, uh, the 2010 report, which is for the year 2009. And you'll see this for footnote 9. It says, see Appendix C for definitions. Reserve-based estimates were discontinued in 2009. See introduction. So let's go to that introduction and see what they say about why reserve base was done away with. National reserves information for most mineral commodities found in this report included, including those for the United States, are derived from a variety of sources. The ideal source of such information would be comprehensive evaluations that apply the same criteria to deposits in different geographic areas and report the results by country. In the absence of such evaluations, national reserve estimates compiled by countries for selected mineral commodities are a primary source of national reserves information. Lacking national assessment information given by governments, such sources such as academic articles, company reports, presentations by company representatives and trade journals, articles, or a combination of these serve as the basis for national reserves information reported in the mineral commodity sections of this publication. A national estimate may be assembled from the following historically reported reserves information carried for years without alteration because no new information is available. So let's go back to our number series here. Let's look at some of these countries. Now remember I showed you the United States is mining about 5% of its reserves every year, but its reserves are never going down at all. Now those reserves actually should go up when we get to these years of 2005, 6, and 7. When the price starts to increase, you would expect those reserves to rise. You'd also expect them to fall as uh, the price is staying flat uh, when it's being mined every year. But you can see they're not changing in either direction. And that's not just the United States. Let's take uh, Australia. You can see Australia is 1,000 there. Well, let's go to their reserves. The reserves in Australia are 29,000, 29,000, 29,000, 29,000, 29,000, 30,000, 30,000, 31,000, 31,000, 31,000, and all the way down. So we got it from the horse's mouth here that they are carrying forward old numbers and uh, these numbers don't mean anything. So uh, they're clearly just filling in the blanks. Uh, it's clear by the numbers. And uh, so let's keep reading. Historically reported reserves reduced by the amount of historical production. Okay, that's what your reserve should be reduced by. The production. As they're mining it, the reserves should decrease, but they don't change. And company reported reserves. International Minerals Availability Studies conducted by the Eurus Bureau of the Mines. Now they did away with this bureau. And you can chase that rabbit trail. Pretty amazing they actually got rid of a federal agency, but they did. They got rid of the U.S. Bureau of Mines. And estimates of identified resources by an international collaborative effort, the International Strategic Minerals Inventory, are the basis for some reserve estimates. The USGS collects information about the quantity and quality of mineral resources, but does not directly measure reserves. And companies or governments do not directly report reserves to the USGS. Reassessment of reserves is a continuing process, a continuing process, but the numbers never change. And the intensity of this process differs, differs for mineral commodities, countries, and time period. Throughout the history of the mineral commodity summaries and its predecessor prior to 1978 commodity data summaries, the presentation of resource data has evolved, just kind of like the CPI and the unemployment numbers have evolved. Although world resources have been discussed each year, presentation of reserves and reserve base data varied from 1957 through 1979. Only reserves information was published in the reports, but from 1980 through 1987, only estimates of reserve base 
a concept introduced by the U.S. Bureau of the Mines and the USGS in 1980, were published. Beginning in 1988, both reserves and reserve base information were listed for each mineral commodity where, the, where applicable and available. Prior to 1996, the minerals availability studies conducted by the USBM and work with international collaborators were the basis for reserve base data reported in the mineral commodity summaries. When the USBM was closed in 1996, this function was discontinued. Since that time, reserve base estimates have been updated to be consistent with changes in reserves. But the non-reserves component of the information upon which the reserve base data were estimated is not current enough to support defensible reserve base estimates. For that reason, publication of reserve base estimates was discontinued for mineral commodity summaries in 2010. So, as you can see, when we dig into the numbers, we can see that they are very suspicious. Things that we expect to see, uh, the numbers go down as they're mining it, they don't change. Things that we'd expect to see, the numbers increase as the price increases, we don't see and this very suspicious dropping off of the reserve base and then as soon as our reserve base drops off you can see that 570 we were at 270 reserves all of a sudden the reserves are jumping up 400 510 and 530 in the last report so not a real reliable uh, set of data to uh, base your theory that there's no silver shortage of course the question of whether or not there's a shortage has nothing to do with phony estimates about mines that haven't been built and uh, things like that. As I pointed out, and he does point out in this video, that, uh, and I've pointed out many times, that silver, there's just as much silver now as there ever has been. If you watch my office series, the one about unmining silver, it explains to you that no silver has come into or gone out of existence since the beginning of the universe. It's just that it changes where it's located. The problem is, is that as we unmine silver and discard it into landfills, uh, it's actually more economical to try to recover it from mines than recover it from landfills because it's discarded in such tiny amounts. Now, there's a lot of other uh, points that could be made here. There's the SRS Rocco articles. I encourage you to read those about how the quality of the uh, silver veins have gone way down. And uh, even by a factor of 90%, uh, the quality of the ores has gone down and they're not getting nearly as much silver. But so I didn't expect this to be such an easy thing to take apart. Uh, very strange that a couple of Forex traders would decide to go on the attack against Physical Silver and Ted Butler. But uh, I would say by looking at all the data, uh, I would have to agree with Ted. Uh, he did his best to pick out a number that he could use to try to estimate how many years were left at current usage rates. But of course, the numbers are so fudged and uh, changed and even definitions changed and dropped uh, there's really even no way to make any sense out of it so as the saying goes uh, statistics don't lie uh, but liars sure do statistics and uh, that seems to be the case here so I don't think there's too much to worry about we can see the silver shortage beginning to emerge uh, it's emerging with uh, late deliveries of silver to, for the Silver Eagles. We now have a story coming out of the RCM that uh, there's delays and suspensions on the Canadian maple leaf. And of course, the main point is going to be that uh, a shortage is when you have to get in a queue. Remember in Hurricane Sandy when they had to queue for gasoline and uh, they were standing in line. The price wasn't rising and it was fixed but there were people in line selling gas in gas cans for five six seven ten dollars a gallon so you tell me what was the price of gasoline in that New Jersey area during Hurricane Sandy uh, was it the price people were paying as they had to wait for days and hours on end or was it the price that people were paying to get gas immediately uh, that was a shortage 
when you have shortages, you have queues, and we're seeing queues begin, and uh, queues and shortages are caused by not letting a price rise to the point where supply comes online. So, uh, very weak case uh, against Ted Butler, and uh, I think that uh, I, I thank uh, the moments in trading for doing that, uh, for getting me to examine the data that's behind the USGS and now that I've seen uh, the facts of what they've assembled I place absolutely no stalker confidence at all in the USGS data and we'll talk to you next time